Good morning. Welcome to day six of my subtle meditation boost, 14 days. Um, so, wow, we're almost halfway there. Uh, today, I want to continue our discussion about mantra, and then we're going to do some mantra meditation. So I want to talk today about the neurobiology of mantra and what we know from the research. So there is, there's sort of a large body of research around meditation, and um, a lot of that meditation is either mindfulness-based meditation or undefined in the research. It's very similar with the asana research. You sort of don't know what the asanas were, so that we, we have some challenges with that research, and I hope it's you know, going to get better. But there's one study that I found um, that looked at mindfulness-based meditation uh, versus mantra-based meditation. And what they determined about mantra, if, in, in addition to different parts of the brain being activated uh, med in terms of meditation in general, what they found specifically about mantra meditation is there seems to be this widespread cortical inhibition in when you use mantra. So what that means, what they think that means, is that the the, the rest of your brain that's doing the kind of running around, thinking about things, wandering around, then the part of your brain, which is more called default uh, mode network and has to do with um, parts of the brain that are further back. And then these front parts of the brain that like focus and concentrate, um, that there's more of that focus concentrate stuff going on with mantra. And what they think uh, is happening with the, the rest of the cor cortex is that it's being inhibited. What that means, is what they think it means is <laughs> um, as other thoughts try to come in, they there's like this gate that closes, and the other thoughts aren't, aren't like they're they're closed off from coming in to, or being activated in the cortex. Now that's something that the yogis have always understood, of course, but it's interesting that research is starting to parse that out, and there there are a couple of studies out there that are comparing different kinds of research and and showing the benefits of of mantra. That doesn't mean that there aren't benefits of other kinds of meditation. Of course there are. But, um, you know, as somebody who has been practicing and teaching these, uh, this, this line of meditation for a long time, um, what I've found over the years is there's, there's kind of a misconception or a misunderstanding about meditation. People think yoga is asanas and meditation is blue sky, vipassana, or mindfulness or Buddhism, you know, so you often get that sort of yoga is asana, meditation is Buddhism. And that's kind of a shame because yoga actually has a very rich and much more ancient tradition of meditation than Buddhism. And Buddhism, in fact, arises out of that tradition, you know. So, uh, and the basic tool is is mantra. So it, it, it you know, it makes sense. It behooves us to learn more about this mantra practice and how it can be helpful. Uh, in terms of, you know, improving mental health, improving concentration, uh, improving health in general, because it helps to lower allostatic load and uh, allow the, the body to be in less of a stress state, right? So there's, there's a lot of different benefits of the practice. Um, and then, of course, it helps when, when you use mantra, the other piece is it helps us to leverage our spiritual assets. So as opposed to mindfulness or blue sky, we're just kind of stilling the mind. Mantra is like, now I'm going to connect. I'm going to plug into that source. Um, and if, again, if spirituality is not the right word for you, but at least it plugs us into interconnectivity, interdependency, and it helps us to plug into our sense of purpose and meaning. And those things are, are really important. So we're going to start um, our practice this morning. Sorry, my family's in the other room talking. <laughs> um, we're going to start our, our practice this morning um, and base it on mantra again. And what I, I and yesterday I was talking about what mantra could possibly be, what you could use for a mantra. So um, so today I'd like to expand on that <clears throat> and ask you to think about purpose and meaning or spiritual connection for you and to be to to start thinking about it and start to allow that uh, awareness to arise in you so that you can use a mantra that's going to be really helpful uh, and specific for you you know so that's why I'm sort of like well you know there's all these mantras from the yoga tradition but they may not be 
applicable. You know, they, it has, it has to have a sense of meaning. And without that sense of meaning, you're missing a key part of mantra. I'll talk about more of that tomorrow. There's, there's actually three key aspects of mantra that I'll talk about more tomorrow. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our practice. You can soften your shoulders, soften the muscles in your face. Begin to notice the flow of the breath in and out through your nose. If you like, you can close or soften your eyes. <clears throat> And as you go into the breath and start to feel more of a sense of regular flow in and out of your breath, then start to notice the sound. My breath makes a sound. Yesterday I was talking about listening to the birds and hearing words in the bird song. And this is a similar kind of idea. Hear the word in your breath. You want, to, you want it should be short. If you're not quite sure what to do, choose something simple like kindness or peace. You hear the sounds coming from the back of your throat, coming from the air, creating friction against the back of your throat. Also coming from your breath. And then coming from that which underlies the breath, the sense of universal energy or prana. And then hearing the sound all around you. As if the universe is vibrating with the sound of your mantra. The sound comes from within, the sound comes from without, the sound lies underneath the breath, and the sound permeates all the cells in your body. It's not just a cognitive experience. So let this uh, next breath be um, that last uh, part of mantra or the, the last moment of your meditation and then take another breath or two here just just of awareness notice how it makes you feel to do that practice and of course this is just a little boost so you can take that practice that we did today and, and try it for longer see how it works for you um, one of the a wonderful way to to work your meditation is to use a timer and to start with five minutes and then um, every couple days add one minute and, and see how see how it goes. And you, you soon will be able to sit for longer, but, but it takes time and you have to build it up. Well, thank you for being here. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll talk about those three um, aspects of mantra tomorrow. Okay, let me see. Leave questions and comments, please.